So I'm from Colorado where things don't grow. And I now live in Washington state where things grow like crazy, especially the things that you don't want to grow, like, like blackberry bushes. And that sounds delicious. It sounds like a really delicious problem to have, but not so, not, not so. They're considered a noxious weed. They are so impossible to get rid of. It's unbelievable. We've tried everything. You have no idea how many times I found the end of the blackberry bush, ripped the roots out, and you know what happens next year? There's, there's more blackberries. There's more, and they, they poke, and they're not fun. They're not fun. What's up, Sudzers? I'm Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Mrs. Soap and Clay. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things. We are on day nine of 365 days of soap, and today we're doing the gardener's soap. Because I've been out in the garden pulling blackberries, and my hands are dirty, and they hurt, and it's not a lot of fun, and I'm trying to figure out this whole, you know, making and growing thing. It's, okay, thing. So it's really important for a gardener soap to have a lot of extra scrubby bits to help get all of the dirt and the grime out of, you know, the cracks and the crevices of your hands as well as from underneath your fingernails. And that's definitely what this bar accomplishes. This bar also has some extra skin loving oils and butters that really create this big, beautiful lather that helps everything rinse away cleanly. This particular gardener soap is scented with lemongrass and a little bit of eucalyptus because it smells very green and fresh. And that's what we're all going for in the middle of spring when we're in our backyard gardening, because we can't go up front because COVID. And to make up for the fact that I don't actually know how to garden, I am going to be decorating the tops of these soaps with some cool, with a cool flower design. So are you ready to see whether or not I'm capable of doing that? Me, me too, let's do it. <laughs> I love a good gardener's soap. Now, for this particular recipe, we are looking at putting um, quite a bit of pumice powder into it, which is great, obviously, to scrub off all the dirt and gunk um, from your hands and from underneath your fingernails after you've spent a, an afternoon out, you know, creating flowery magic. But the pumice can be a little bit drying and it can also inhibit the lather of a soap. And obviously I never want my soaps to be less than stellar when it comes to the lather because I do really like a big bubble. So the particular blend of oils and butters that we're using are specifically designed to sort of make sure that that pumice powder does not turn the lather into a more creamy lather and we still get the good bubble right off the top as well as to help nourish and moisturize the skin because again that pumice can be a little bit drying so the recipe blend that we are working with today the oils they are coconut oil babassu oil and then shea butter and that's going to make up about 60 percent of the oils in the batch this is going to be a very thick batter because we're not doing a whole lot of extra you know fun stuff to it except for the tops but we'll get to that later now in addition to these hard oils we also have olive oil and avocado oil to again help with the nourishing and the gentle cleansing and we are also going to be adding sugar to the soap batter itself there are a lot of really fun ways that you can incorporate sugars into your soap recipes and this is one of them. You can take your sugar and go ahead and 
make sure it's all dissolved in some distilled water and add that directly to your saponified oils right before you pour. Another option, which I think we'll do in a video you know, soon, will be adding the sugar directly to your lye water. And that's a little bit scarier of a process, but it's not, you know, terrifying. Now, what's going on here is I'm actually adding in my kaolin clay to the sugar water, and that's all going to go in at the same time once we have added the lye water to the oils and emulsified. Now, that's just gonna sit and do its thing for a little bit while we get the oils ready for the lye water. And we also need to get the pumice ready to be put into the soap batter as well. So what I'm doing for this particular batch is I'm pouring out a couple ounces of my base oils and I am adding the pumice powder directly to that, which I'm then gonna mix up and make sure that the pumice powder is really well dispersed within those oils. We don't have any clumps going on anywhere. So we can pour that in in sort of a nice slurry into the soap batter after we've emulsified. Now, pumice, it's it's kind of a difficult one to just sort of, it's, it's a difficult exfoliant to just sort of plop directly into a batch of soap because it's very fine grained. And when you do that, you end up with these little tiny clumps of pumice powder throughout your batch that, well, A, it's not gonna feel super great because it's not a well blended bar when you're using it, but two, it makes you wonder if you have some lye heavy spots in there. So it's best to go ahead and disperse that in your base oils before continuing. Now, this is the scent for the uh, gardener soap. This is a lemongrass scent. I love this lemongrass. It has not only lemongrass, but it also has a little bit of bergamot in it too. It's very bright. It's very green. It's very perfect for you know people who love being out in the garden and you know getting dirty and doing their thing. And everything is now ready for soaping. We have all the colors up there on the right hand side that we will use for the decorative flower at the top of the, the soaps and then all the additives are there on the left. Now we're going to emulsify this. You know we're actually going to go a little bit further than emulsification. We're probably going to go to a, a thin to maybe even a medium trace. I know I talk so much trash about the whole concept of trace, but in this case, it's sort of beneficial to use it. Now, I'm gonna pour off a little bit of the soap batter, just a teensy tiny bit into each of those colorant containers because we don't need much to do the decorative flowers on the top of the bar. The rest of the soap batter is going to be colored a single color, so we're just gonna use a really beautiful yellow mica for that, and that will be the base color that will then get poured into the tray molds, into the circular molds that we are using for this gardener's soap. You don't really need a whole lot of mica when it comes to, you know, yellow because soap batter is sort of naturally a cream color anyway. And I know usage rates for mica, it's, you know, one teaspoon per, you know, pound, and that's fine. I sort of eyeball it. I never have used a full teaspoon of any colorants ever in any of my soaps, and I think they're nice and bright and they pop really well regardless. Now, that is the pumice that is going in there and you can see how it darkens up within that oil. And I know, you know, I actually ripped the sound out of the actual making of the, the soap, but if you could hear that, it would be super scratchy. And that's good, because we definitely want the exfoliation that comes from, from pumice powder for a gardener's soap. It's really beneficial for, you know, breaking up that dirt and getting underneath the nails and really wicking away all of the, the stuff now that is the kaolin clay that is going in that also has the sugar in it remember so that will sort of start to thicken up the batch rather quickly so at this point you are going to want to make sure you have it scented and ready to get into the mold as quickly as possible because we don't want it to get so thick that you're having to sort of smush things down in your molds in order to get rid of any air bubbles or pockets that you have you know within each individual uh, mold section so just a quick mix with the whisk there, getting all that lemongrass bergamot in. It's such a bright, beautiful smell. Really, really love this one. It just screams springtime. That coupled with the beautiful flower design we're doing on top of these bars, it really makes for you know a perfect gardener's soap. Now, just a quick mix with all of these micas that we're using for the flower on top of the bars. Not a lot is going into these bars. Again, I would say maybe half an ounce into each of those three containers for the colors. Just gonna mix them up very quickly. And the next step is the pour and then the creation of the flowers. Now, 
Now on to the pour. There is nothing really, you know, particularly special about this pour. It's literally just pour it into the individual containers and, you know, let them do their thing. Now, I spoke about medium trace earlier, and this is really why medium trace is sort of an important thing. One, you don't want the batter to be too thick because then you don't get the nice pretty top on each of these, uh, these circles, which you know, then you have to take your spatula to the top and sort of smooth everything out or maybe plane them off afterwards and that's not fun. But also the medium trace as opposed to like a thin trace will really suspend the pumice powder really well throughout the entire soap. So you know that every time you wash your hands with it, you're going to be getting the grit that you need to sort of scrub off all of this stuff. Now, this is the flour pour. Now, what you're going to do with the flowers on top is you're going to alternate your colors just putting a little bit of each color on each bar and then for the next color you're going to go right on top of the first circle that you made and pour more on. I believe this is called like a column pour. I, I don't know I'd have to look it up but the idea is you're sort of creating circles of color that we're then going to take a skewer through and pull in different ways to create different sort of flower patterns. Now you see there with the orange going on top of the the pink there and it's spreading out that pink which is you know it's beautiful that's super pretty and you can continue doing that as long as your batter stays thin enough to do so realistically until the entire top of the bar is covered and I'm not going to do that for this particular pour we're just going to do I think three or four passes with the colors until it's, I don't know, about two thirds of the bar covered on the top. And then we will go ahead and take our skewer to them and create the flower designs. Now, for a pour like this, it really is important that you keep your batter reasonably fluid. Now, the reason for that is you want it to push the batter underneath it to the sides and sort of lay flat inside of that batter so you don't have, you know, things poking up that will make it difficult to, to actually swirl all of the colors together. And so far so good with this batter. It's looking great. Everything is still very, very liquid, which is good. I actually made this happen by super fatting the batch, but putting all of the super fats percentage into the beakers that I then dispersed the uh, colors into before we even began. So there's extra oil hanging out in each of those beakers for the colors and that really does help with you know this particular pour so you can keep everything nice and fluid. Now this is going to be the last layer that I put on the circles and then we are going to move on to the skewering which is a lot of fun and like really artistic. Now it's time to pull a design into these circles. Now the idea is for a sort of basic looking flower, right, you would take five or six points from the outside and pull into the middle of the circle that you created with your, you know, your extra colors. And you would then pull from the middle out to the edges again. Now, I like to do all of my flowers a little bit different. I get kind of bored with, you know, doing the exact same thing over and over again. So as a result, all of the flowers on each of these bars, they're all going to look a little bit, a little bit different, which is cool. See, that's a fun way to do it too. You can pull it out just from the middle there and create, yeah, that's pretty. So yeah, all of this is really dealer's choice at this point. It's just what you want to do with the batter, what you want your flowers to look like. And this is, you know, the fun part of this particular pour. The rest of it is all, you know, very stock standard, as I think it sort of should be. This is a gardener's soap again, so we are looking at function and performance over everything else. Something like a flower on top of a gardener's soap, super not necessary, because what's going to be, oh look how pretty that is, isn't that nice? But you see the, uh, the thickness for the yellow underneath? That's what I was talking about earlier. It wasn't going to stay super thin for too terribly long. Anyway, back to the function of a gardener's soap. Again, the whole point of a gardener's soap is to make sure that all of the dirt and the grime and you know everything that you had your hands in while you were out and about doing your gardening 
is easily removed from your skin without you know further injuring your skin and hopefully get some moisture involved in the the, the soaping process as well so the flower not necessary does it add something fun and exciting to the bar sure does so you know I'm gonna do it because it's pretty and why not and you know really at this point I get bored really with continuing to make the, the flowers and so I just kind of whip them around and do the thing and like it that one that one's really nice I love that one and once this is all done we are going to cover this in plastic wrap and stick it in the oven for gel phase we're going to see pop this one for sure we want these colors to pop really well and we don't want to see any soda ash on them tomorrow we are going to let these sit overnight and then we will unmold them tomorrow morning And I actually decided to not see pop these. Um, I wanted to show you what the colors do if you don't force them through heat. And you see how much lighter all of the colors are compared to what they were when we were pouring. Now that really is because they did not go through gel phase, and so the colors did not hit their maximum with their maximum potential there. Which is why I love see popping everything. Which is why I love adding some heat to my finished soaps to really make sure that those colors all come out really you know beautiful but these bars that said they're still super beautiful bars they're lovely and because of the ratio of oils and you know hard oils and butters they are reasonably firm right now which is good they're going to cure up really nicely i am going to need to stamp those within the next day or so if i have any hope of getting my stamp on them but yeah that's that's a gardener soap this guy is wonderful it's so exfoliating very very moisturizing the lather is on fire because of that sugar water it's such a great great lather and there it is that is you know day nine of 365 days of soap so there you have it day nine of 365 days of soap the gardener's soap the smell of it was amazing. I really love the lemongrass and the eucalyptus mixed together. It was a really, it's a really bright, beautiful, like green smell, which is great. And the bars are wonderfully, you know, formed because it's the perfect size to sort of do the thing and get your nails underneath. It's, it's wonderful. Mr. Soap and Clay tested it too, and he requested that I make a new batch of mechanic soaps, which I realized I haven't done in a little bit. So that might be on the channel soon. We'll see. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today, Sudsers. I'm glad you're along for the ride. You can, you know, follow me on social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all the things. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so. Please do so. I really appreciate that. Share with your friends. Share with your enemies. I mean, just share with people because I'm really getting my teaching fix right now and I really enjoy that. And, you know, I want to I wanna keep doing the thing. So, you know, thanks. And I appreciate you. And I will see you tomorrow. Bye.